As a young and inspiring mixer, mixing engineers like Michael Brower, Bob Clearmountain, Chris Lord Algae, and so many others were like beacons of light. For over two decades, they have worked with some of the biggest artists in the world, and yet, despite the ruthless competition, they have managed to maintain successful and sustainable careers, all while remaining relevant and in demand. The question of what made them so legendary irked at me like an unreachable itch on my back. Was it their gear, their management, their technical skills, or something else entirely? I needed answers, as my biggest fear was making mistakes that could derail my dream of having a successful and sustainable mixing career. So like a detective on the hunt for a clue, I scoured every interview, blog post, and magazine article I could find, dissecting every word that these legends spoke, looking for the keys to their success. What I discovered both shocked and surprised me. It wasn't what I had expected, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you what I learned, including something that I know myself and many mixing engineers can't forget on their climbs to success. As I dug deeper into the abyss of mixing, I couldn't help but feel a sense of disbelief at what I was uncovering. It was like discovering that unicorns are real and living in your backyard. When I first started mixing, I would read in blogs and magazines how mixers would use this piece of gear or that piece of gear, and quickly I would get a case of gear acquisition syndrome. But often, I would read over the parts where the mixer would explain why they were reaching for any piece of gear. Sure, there are sonic qualities any plugin or hardware offers, but that isn't why it gets used. Ultimately, as mixers, there should only be one thing that should drive our decision making when we reach to use anything in a mix, as Manny Mariquin explains. It's really like psychologically you're thinking about the emotions and the different colors and feel, and, but you got to do it without ever, anyone noticing, which is so crazy. Right? That's the For beauty sure. of what we do. It's just like, let's just make it, when I listen from the beginning to end, I'm engaged with the songs, not the sound. A simple way to level up our mixing is to stop worrying about the gear and plugins any pro mixer uses and decide for ourselves if the color any piece of gear adds is going to help us and our style to convey the emotion the artist wants their fans to feel while listening. Focusing on developing our emotional mixing skill set is more important than our technical mixing skill sets. I don't care if it's a not a great mix, but if it feels good, because you that's all you're going for is 100% feel, don't worry about the technique. Technique will come later. Plain and simple, the pros understand that trusting their instincts in capturing the feeling and emotion of a mix will always be what a listener falls in love with over sonically perfect and technical mixes. And for myself, there was something I had realized have been stopping me from developing trust in my instincts and figuring out how to bring those emotions out in a mix. And it doesn't necessarily stem from a bad place, but creates a sort of psychological box we get trapped in. So many of us read about all these rules to follow when mixing and how these rules are not meant to be broken. You know, the type of advice like, if you need to boost more than four dB, you need to retract everything. A lot of it got engraved in my skull and I was terrified of doing anything outside the rules for fear of wrecking the mix I had spent so much time to get right by following the rules. And more often than not, by the end of the mix, it just felt, well, boring. And boring isn't what comes to mind when I think of mixes from pros like Tom Lord Algae and Chris Lord Algae. And often to get a mix exciting, you might need to go a more unconventional route, like TLA explains. Chris and I kind of jumped on the bandwagon really early when we were at Unique Recording, because Unique Recording had so much gear. We had so much stuff, so we just loved to go through and abuse it all. Pretty much, if you weren't supposed to set it a certain way, we set it that way. All the other engineers would be looking at what we were doing going, you, you shouldn't do that, you know, you, it's, it's not supposed to work that way, you know? And I can remember when I was mixing back in the highlights, I actually used to put pieces of tissue over the meters because the producer would come in and he'd see the compressors and they'd just be going, boom. Without even listening to the mix, he would say, oh no, that's too much. So finally, after like the first two mixes, I just put tissues over all the meters so that he couldn't look at it, and he would just have to use his ear hearing. A secret a lot of legendary mixers hold close to their hearts is the willingness to break the conventional rules in order to get a piece of gear to color the emotion they're after on a snare, bass, vocal, whatever it is. And following rules isn't the only thing that can stop us from reaching our desired goals for a mix. What if I told you that sticking to the same old routine could be leading you down a dangerous path? A path where your mixes stagnate and fail to evolve. But the truth is, is that the greatest mixers out there are constantly pushing themselves to try new things and experiment with different techniques. You know, the key is to come up with inspiration and not follow any rule books and try things that are a little bit outside your comfort zone. 
and constantly experimenting to evolve as a mixer is not just how you stay ahead in this industry, but how you also refresh your creative juices. Because mixing is a constantly evolving craft, and as we expand our skills and master new techniques, it's easy to get caught up in the excitement of using every trick in the book to make our mixes stand out. After all, we've put in countless hours of trial and error to hone in our skills and achieve the perfect balance of clarity and punch. But sometimes, even after pouring our hearts and souls into a mix, the artist may have different ideas and ask us to scale back on our tricks. It can be tough to hear, but that's just part of the game. You want to give the artist what they want. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys, they think it's what we do, you know, fuck that. No, we're here for them, to serve as them, for sure. their vision. And for hopefully, sure. we can help. You got to get in their head and see what they're trying to hear. And then you facilitate. For sure. Whether you agree with it or not. There's sure. a lot of times where I disagree with certain things, and it is what it is, right? Yeah. I always say their name goes in the front. Our name's fuck. You can't even find it in that nowadays. Good luck. It's the artist's song, and as mixers, we aren't here to impose our will. We need to ensure our egos don't ruin the record for the artist. And something we probably all can relate to is being in the zone while mixing, getting lost in our work, and before we know it, hours have passed. But what happens when you realize that all the hard work you put into a mix isn't leading to a desired result? It's like that feeling when you're playing that game of Jenga, and you know that one wrong move could bring the whole tower tumbling down. And not only have you just lost the game, you're back at square one starting from scratch. But here's the thing, sometimes starting over is exactly what the mix needs. You know, I can see they're not happy. And then they finally look, can we talk to you for a minute after the second mix? So yeah, the, you know, we don't think you're really getting who we are, you know? <laughs> We're not, we're not a big hi-fi, we're not Roxy music. We're like this little spiky ball, this really irritating thing with like the jagged edges coming out of it, but really small and compact and irritating. <laughs> we're a punk band. I was like, oh, I went back and listened to what I did. I said, like, holy shit, did I ever get this wrong? Okay, let me start over. And so I went back and started over. I got that in my head, got that image in my head. And then they were really happy and, you know, and I nailed it. It's like hitting the reset button on a video game. Sure, you lose your progress, but you also get a fresh start with new ideas and a clearer perspective. It isn't a punishment for not being perfect the first time, but part of the journey of being a mixer and something we all just need to embrace. It's natural going through this process to find ourselves overcome with doubt in our abilities. We pour our hearts and souls into a mix, hoping to capture the essence of what we think is sonic perfection, only to stumble upon the harsh truth that our skills have yet to reach their pinnacle. I've been there more times than I can personally count and have been consumed by self-doubt. But in the midst of this creative chaos, I always try to remember a key piece of advice I've learned from various mixing engineers through the years. Be patient with your progress. If you, if you truly enjoy engineering, particularly mixing, you will get better without knowing it. And it took me a little longer than it will take you. You guys probably know more now starting out than I did when I started. It's a different world. Pro mixers like Dave are helpful in being a reminder that grace and patience are our allies, that the journey itself is our teacher. I often refer to a concept from the book Atomic Habits to remind myself that as long as I get 1% better each and every mix, my skills will eventually meet my own expectations. And this next lesson, I have to admit, for the longest time, I turned my nose up at it because I just thought it was a fancy mouse. But boy, oh boy, I was wrong. So many top tier mix engineers swear by it. And one day, I caved and gave it a try. And after a couple weeks, I started to realize why pros have this one part of their workflow that never gets swapped out. It's really difficult to be creative when you can only move one fader at a time. That makes no sense to me. You can't touch the music with a mouse, okay? Cats chase these things. These aren't made for mixing music, okay? They're made for, you know, driving a computer, not creating music. This is made for creating music. So imagine trying to play piano, guitar with one finger. It doesn't happen. So by having this work surface, I can at least be inside the music. Because here's why. Your brain hears something you want to change. And if you can't change it, then what are you really doing? So mixing is like playing a piano. You got to be able to use your brain, your ears, and your feel. And you have to put the music in a place where you know where it is. I regret not listening sooner to lots of pro mixers encouraging aspiring mixers like myself to just get even one fader that could help them create more emotions and movement with the mix. And earlier I had mentioned that there was something that myself and a lot of mixers can forget. You see, mixing can feel like a roller coaster ride with twists, turns, ups and downs that are all thrilling and exciting, all while at the same time maybe making you question everything. And while going through this process over and over, it's really easy to lose sight of one of the most important reasons I believe all of us got into making records. 
And the pros are great at reminding us. My favorite mixers do exactly the same thing that I do. We just sit down and we just don't think much. We just have fun and we just play the song. We can often get so deep into the woods of this really competitively stressful industry that having a way to remind ourselves that this is supposed to be fun and stay fun, which is arguably the most important thing that I've picked up from the pros I study. But these tips alone aren't going to be the miracle cure that help you achieve professional sounding mix results. Which is why you'll want to watch this video right here for the foundational principles every pro mixer understands that allows them to achieve professional sounding results time and time again.